Good morning, everybody. I would like to invite everybody just to, to come up to the front. We're going to press in. He's so worthy of our highest praise. He's worthy of our worship. So I don't want to waste any time. So right now, Jesus, we just position ourselves to encounter you, God. God, you're so worthy. God, you paid such a such a high price for us, God. So, Lord, I come before you, Lord, just to love on you. Lord, just to be with you, Jesus. God, you're so good. Lord, we wait on you this morning. Holy Spirit, we ask that you move. Lord, we ask that your spirit fill this place. Lord, we just tear down any distractions right now. Lord, we set aside all the things of this world, Lord. Every weight, Father God. look to you this morning. God, you're so good. Lord, you're perfect in all your ways, Jesus. Lord, magnificent in every way. God, there's none like you.
treasure I'm blind to know what you're like. I'm after your
whose grace we wrote our story, I'll testify. In Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water, sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father, our God will finish what He started, our God will finish what He started, this is my testimony from death to life, His grace rewrote my story, I'll testify. Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony, this is my testimony, this is my testimony from death to life. This grace rewrote my story, I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony, this is my testimony, this is my testimony. You're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe this is my testimony from death to life. This grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. But Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony, this is my testimony, this is my testimony, from death to life, cause grace rewrote my story, I'll testify, by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified, this is my testimony, this is my testimony. God, I thank you. God, you're so worthy. Jesus, I just pause just to thank you. Lord, you've pulled us up from a pit of despair, Father God. Lord, and you've given us hope, Father. Lord, I just want to offer you something worth, something of worth. God, I don't want to give you half-hearted praise, Lord. Half-hearted worship, Jesus. Oh. Uh -huh. 
until you have it all. My heart is old. Come on, let's pray this. You won't relent until you have it all. My heart is old. I'll say.
You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Lord, we exalt you, God. soul to Jesus. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Yes, you.
yours is the kingdom and yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom and yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom and yours is the power yours is the glory Spontaneous worship, just let it flow across the room. There is no other purpose for us being here than the King of the Lord. Come on, He's the only reason. Come on, saints, press in for just a moment. Every voice in the house, releasing a sound into the heavens, whether it's through prayer or worship or making decrees. But God wants to hear you. Worthy are you, Jesus. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament show his mighty handiwork. There's none like you. Only you can satisfy. Only you can the mountains satisfy. melt like wax before the Lord. Before the Lord of all the earth. There's none like you, God. 
the heavens declare his righteousness we exalt the name of Jesus For the Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? God, we say you're the stronghold of our lives, God. Whom shall we be afraid? God, if an army encamped around this nation, Father. God, we say that there's more of us than them, Lord, for the angel armies have been assigned. Come on, you're a nation within a nation. You can be blessed even if a nation don't want to be. I want you to declare your citizenship right now. You're a citizen of heaven. We sang about it earlier. You're seated in heavenly places. You didn't receive a spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption by where you cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy, God. And presidents have no authority in that place. Congress has no authority. The threats of every terrorist group across the earth has no authority in that place. Jesus, we apply the Lamb's blood from the top of our head to the soles of our feet, God. God, we put the border of your blood, God, across Sierra County right now, Lord. I ask you where you've given us extreme spiritual authority. God, we say let the borders of this county be bathed in the blood in these last days. Come on, I wish I had a few people to pray and decree and declare. Come on, like you're not just a ship going down. God calls you blessed in the city and blessed in the field. God, we say we're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We say our name is sealed in the Lamb's book of life. God, there's no greater census, there's no greater registration, Father, than our name written in the good book, God, where you've declared us sons and daughters of the Most High God. And everything in the earth happening pales in comparison to our rightful place in you. Worthy are you, Jesus. Come on, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name forever. Come on, magnify the Lord. Come on, I dare you to stay there for a few moments and just magnify the name of Jesus. We magnify you, Lord. Worthy. Come on, how many spontaneous praisers are in the room? You don't care who's next to you. You don't care if anybody's joining you. You got to shout off your lips. You got to dance in your feet. You've got to whistle on your lips. For our God is an awesome God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Listen, I want you to find somebody and love on them. Welcome them into the house of the Lord. Amen.
the ushers to come this morning. I want to challenge everybody to, as you're making your way to your seat, prepare your offering, your tithes, and your offerings. Put our hands together and welcome our live stream family and other campuses that are connected with us. And we thank God for them. If you're watching by live stream, you can text to give 575 214 7616. NewHopeRevivalChurch.com. Of course, you can use those platforms as well to give in house. But I want to challenge all of us. I know that. Most of us are tracking. Obviously, we're Sunday morning right here, Wednesday night, Silver City, Friday nights, Tucson. And I don't want you to get the idea if you're not following that, you know, what I preach right now, I'm going to preach on Wednesday and then I'm going to preach it again. And, you know, in Tucson, we just, it's not the reality. And so you need to stay tuned because I don't know what I'm going to say, where I'm going to say it, and how I'm going to say it. And I don't have time to review it every time, okay? And so there's crazy things happening in this nation, so some need to be tuned in right now and stay tuned from other campuses of what God's saying. I'm going to be addressing a strong spirit of deception that's in the earth that we've got to expose and expel, lest it take you out in the last days. Lest it take you out in the last days. And so I'm challenging you, like this past Friday night, I dealt with the power of the end time church and six manifestations of dunamis power and how the early church is not just, hey, that was them and we're going to be something different now. No, God wants the end time church to look even more powerful than the early church in the last days as the latter and the former reign converge. But six manifestations of dunamis power, so you need to stay tuned to what God is saying in that. This morning, I'm not necessarily talking about the power of the church. I'll be addressing this deception that's in the earth. And so it all dovetails, but I have to obey God wherever I'm at in the moment to speak. But I'm just trusting that we're staying tuned because we, we won't be able to get everything just on a Sunday morning in the season that we're moving into because things are happening so rapidly. And so if there was some kind of crazy attack and I'm preaching on a Wednesday or Friday, there's no telling what I'm going to say and how I'm going to address us as the body and the nation. And of course, if it's extremely important, obviously I'm going to try to review it the best at, like I just did. You're going to need dunamis power, but to understand that in depth, that's an hour and a half sermon. Amen? Everybody with me? And so as you're preparing to give, you're sowing in really to everything that's, that's happening here, outside of here. And so I want to challenge you no matter what this earth is doing, no matter what the economy is doing, no matter what wars we're on the brink of, always be faithful with tithes and offerings. How many plan on having more than enough if things go crazy? Come on, I don't plan on walking in the spirit of lack. I expect, I'm expecting God to move in powerful ways financially among his people. And every seed that's sown, a hundredfold return is what we're believing and we're declaring it and we're seeing it. Everybody with me? We're not just, it's not just some fantasy land where it's just like, Lord, we pray a hundredfold return and then we're not seeing it. We're seeing it upon people's lives and crazy awesome things happening financially. So you might as well position yourself and say, God, I want to be blessed in these last days. I don't want the spirit of lack to be near me. I want to have more than enough to get the job done. And so prepare your heart right now. Father, I thank you for increase that's upon the house, Lord. God, that's upon other campuses, Lord, that's in the lives of individuals. God, we declare that increase has arrived. God, I say that jobs are going to the next level, Lord. I say that bonuses are shifting. God, I say that some will be written in wills, God. They don't even know that they've got an inheritance coming. God, I thank you, Lord, that strange and unusual things are going to start happening in the financial arena upon the lives of your people. God, I decree it into the atmosphere now. But, God, I challenge everyone to stay true to the investment. When God tells you to move, when he tells you to sow, when he tells you to invest, you do exactly what he says because every single thing belongs to him. There is not one thing that belongs to you. Your business don't belong to you. God, we decree that now that nothing we have belongs to us. God, possessions, any titles we might have, any deeds that we might have. 
God, any bank loans that might be out there. God, whatever we think is ours, we declare right now that none of it's ours. God, that it all belongs to you. And God, we say that it's absolutely impossible to outgive you. And so, God, I push back the forces of hell right now that wants to create a spirit of lack, and I ban them from operating in the finances of your people in these last days, God. In Jesus' name. And God, I call for the fire of God to hit every seed. God, I ask you right now to multiply the money of every person under the sound of my voice right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. When you're ready to invest in the kingdom, I know you're sowing, but you're investing. I want you to just make your way and and invest into the kingdom of God. Amen. Again, if you're watching by live stream, share the video far and wide. And let's believe God to impact other lives. Thank you, Pastor Bob, for bringing the word last week. Let me give God praise for Pastor Bob. He's a reliable voice in the pulpit, and so I thank God. I know that he's going to preach the word, amen? And that's what we like is the word to be preached in this pulpit. And so thank you for preaching the word of God. Let me know, opinions won't move you. The opinion of man won't do anything for your heart, but the Word of God will do a whole lot. It'll transform your life. And so I thank God for that voice. Thank you for praying for us in, while we were in Los Angeles. Syed just asked me, how did it go? And I forgot, well, I've been in Tucson. I've been all these places since then. But, but um, Los Angeles was powerful. We were right there. Obviously, if you're not familiar with Azusa Street, it sits right in Little Tokyo downtown Los Angeles. I mean, literally right downtown is where it sits, that geographical location where the fire of God fell in the city of angels. And this year, they put up the Azusa Street Prayer Tower, not connected to Azusa Street Mission, but another group that we were able to work with. And I remember a few years back, they had we walked in, they had wires hanging and all kinds of stuff, and now it's a beautiful prayer tower that at some point is going to be open, I believe, 24-7 to the whole nation to come right there on Azusa Street and contend for revival to shake the planet. Amen? And so they hosted, and so we thank God for that team. But we had a very powerful time. We had the Pentecostal tour, obviously. Bonnie Brayhouse, a prayer meeting, went into Angelus Temple and Amy Simple McPherson, people that's never experienced that revival tour. We took them on that. And then the next day, we had a powerful lineup of ministers, the power of God rocked the entire room. I mean, it was it was shaking people to the core, even ministers. And I mean, no, that's what God wants to do. He wants to, some people might need a reset spiritually where he does something so supernatural that it launches them to do even greater exploits. And so thank you for praying for us as we contended there. Very powerful time. And then Sunday morning we were in La Puente. Is that where we were? My wife says it better. I call it the bridge. That's what it means in Spanish. So we were at this bridge place, and God just did some awesome things. And so obviously we've got campuses. We've got a national assignment. And so we're just going to stay faith. We're going to go after. We made a vow. We're going after as many possible souls as you can imagine. How many think that's what we ought to do? Time's running out. And we can do it our way or we can do it God's way. And I just want to do it God's way. And God's way is awesome. And it, it's exhausting. I mean, no, it's, it's a lot of things. God, God's way will stretch you in ways that you never dreamed that you'd be stretched. And so I thank God for the opportunity to be stretched. I want him to use our lives up. Amen? I, I don't want to have a whole bunch of reserved energy and then he comes back and it's like, well, man, I could have used that for the kingdom. I want to use everything I've got for the kingdom of God to be advanced. And so we thank God for, for those opportunities to minister. We'll go through these announcements super quick. And then I've got a 59-second video. You've seen it, but you're going to see it again today, and I think it's just going to um, create an alertness in you. But let's go through these super quick. Street evangelism, I might bring James up after the message if you're still here or next week, but I want him to talk about that. 
But he needs laborers. Let me just say this. He needs laborers on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And I know that, you know, obviously some can't make it every time. And you got to balance life and all of that. I get it. If you haven't been yet, I want to encourage some of you to get there and, and be a voice. And let's go after this city. I want us to realize that our city's starting to be aware the church is alive. It exists. It's here. It's calling for repentance. It's not hiding anywhere. It's making their voice be known. And then that becomes normalcy. Amen? If we don't do it, witches are going to be standing on the street corners trying to get people all into there. Witch, and then all of a sudden the church would want to do something about it. Why would we wait? Why don't we just go ahead and destroy all forms of darkness on the front side so that the whole earth knows, but especially our city knows that we're alive, the church is well. And we're advancing the kingdom of God and we're going after the lost. And so don't cause or don't allow something to happen that provokes you to do a good work. We need to do it now. Amen. I don't need disaster to get me to go do what Jesus said go do. And so don't wait for those things. Let's get to work. Let's move through these. Marriage class. See Nancy here. She's waving at us. Five o'clock. Man, Anchor Youth Ministries. You don't want to miss that. I think we got an update of some sort. It's okay. It's good. okay. Awesome fundraiser happening. You got to want to. Don't leave my message to go get a coffee. Okay, so don't do that. But if we're out before one, then do that. But but eight to one, we thank God for mile marker seven. Can we give God praise for them? Maybe they're watching my live stream because they're there right now, but they're doing a fundraiser this morning to help impact the budget for Washington, D.C. So we've got flights, we've got hotels, we've got rental vans, admission tickets, but a lot of that we've purchased. I think we're down to just we need to raise like maybe 3000 or something like that roundabout. And so how many know God's doing it? He's getting the job done, and so... We're going to take our young people to Washington, D.C., and it'll be an experience of a lifetime. 13,317. So one more time, let's give it up for King Jesus. That's how much. Let's come in. So we want your lunch money again for the hundredth time. We just figured we'll just go ahead and say it. But there, there, there's a enchilada fundraiser April 28th. We gave you a break. It's not till April 28th. See? But I think that's going to help knock this thing out pretty quick. Pray for us. We'll get on an airplane tomorrow, fly to Sin City, Las Vegas. We were invited, me and the sheriff, to tell the story how we refused to close the church down. Amen. And so Mike Lindell will be there, General Flynn, Steve Bannon, a whole crew of people. But I'm going to preach Jesus, amen, and what he did and our church to help us stand and address some constitutional things. And so we're always thankful when God decides he wants to put us on a platform like that with other voices. Now, there's going to be voices, I'm sure, saying all kinds of things, but I'm not looking at their voices. I'm looking to figure out what is the assignment from this house to go to Las Vegas and do what Jesus said go do. And so we're not trying to follow any type of flow of what anybody's doing. What you see is what they're going to get right over there. And so we thank God for that opportunity. And so pray for us for safe travels. All of our national stuff at this point, we just have to fly out. There's no chance we could be back. So keep us in prayer as we're 30,000 feet up in the air, you know, just soaring with the clouds. And so I'm believing a sheriff or a police officer gets saved. How many can believe with me? Come on, that's what's going to happen. Las Vegas, we've got, but we've got all kinds of patriots that's supposed to be there, and so let's just believe God that they give their life. We're going to, we got that video? Let's play this video just really quick. You've seen it, but I want, and turn it up, and if it's not up, we'll start it over and turn it up, but.
testing. Hey Amen. Y'all see it up there? Are you ready? How many is ready? Why did you do that to me? Because we need an alarm clock. Hey Amen. That's why. If we blew a speaker out, we'll buy another one. It was probably even worse online. Take your Bible. Let's go to Matthew 24. How many know the, the nations right now are in distress? Everybody with me? And so if you want this, I mean, we kind of have end time Sunday all the time. I'm addressing the last days to some degree, but we've got to address some things that are happening in the earth this morning. It's important that you understand this. How many know Israel for the first time in history? I want you to understand a historical event yesterday attacked by Iran. How many know that that's a crazy thing when they say the first time in history over 300 missiles from Iran begins to hit this place, but yet we shot every single one of them down but one or two, and thank God for the Iron Dome. Amen? Amen. The drones that came in were about $1,000. Every missile that had to shoot one down was $1 million. So we've got a $1 million to take out a $1,000 little drone times 300, 331. Matthew 24. There's a deception loose in the earth. I want to I just declare this. In some ways, this is going to feel in sense like a review in other ways, it's going to feel like in this time and season, this sounds totally different. God's going to say some things this morning. I don't even know what he's going to say. I feel so much inside of me right now that I'm just trying to really organize what I feel in my spirit, man. But I do know that we're going to fulfill the assignment of God, which is to address deception in the earth. How many is willing to recognize that the deception is intense, and it may be amongst people that you think you like on TV and on the news and all these different things? Everybody with me? And so we have got to break away from this mindset of thinking that someone's legit just because they said a few good things. Matthew 24, if you're there, say amen. Deception, hell's greatest weapon in the last days. Deception, hell's greatest weapon. I want to welcome Sun Broadcasting Network out of Albuquerque. Let's put our hands together. We welcome you. We thank you for the opportunity to be on the platform. And we pray that you're blessed with this message. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him. Listen to it. Then Jesus departed or went out from the temple, and his disciples came up to show the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said, Do you see all these things? I assuredly say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. This was a big deal to them. I want you to understand, this was like the question, really the same question that every one of us have. When is Jesus truly going to come? We just saw the video, and it's supposed to produce a little bit of urgency, at least in your heart, to say, man, at any moment, because no man knows the day nor the hour. But we are called to know signs, and we're called to know the season, why we look at the signs. But the solar eclipse happened, and you're still here. Everybody with me? And the blackout didn't happen. Don't mean one ain't coming. I'm just telling you it didn't happen that day. Everybody with me? And so if we're not careful, we start watching this stuff. I mean, Emily saw a whole bunch of stuff, and everybody prepared like that was the day that suddenly everything was going to go to hell in a handbasket. And so here's what happened. I want you to understand. As people walked away from the solar eclipse, and they said, you know what? You Christians are stupid because this didn't happen and that didn't happen because people got ahead of themselves. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. And they just start saying things out of the flesh. But here's one thing that you cannot ignore. 
Luke says it very clear that there's going to be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. And then he says there'll be distress of nations. And so here's what happened. A solar eclipse hit. That is a sign to us, no doubt. But then Iran, the first time in history, launches missiles at Israel. And we're just a few days away, and the distress of nations is upon us. That would have been the better interpretation to just read the Bible and say, listen, this is a sign, but there will be distress of nations. There'll be wars and rumors of wars because solar eclipses, lunar eclipses, and comets have always pointed to major war coming up on the land. And I want you to understand this because exactly what the Bible says was going to occur has happened, and we could track all these comets. We could go backwards. We could track, and we don't realize that there was a comet named the devil that showed up around and we don't want to really discuss these things unless we think we got all the answers. How many is with me? So then we start cooking up stuff that ain't in the Bible. So there's a great deception in the earth and the people don't know what to believe anymore and they think the Christians are about as flaky as the day is long. How many know what I'm talking about? So you even start talking like it's a sign of the time and they just think you're totally stupid now because people went off their rocker and they tried to name, some even said most definitely, this is what they declared Jesus was coming back on this solar eclipse. How many remember 1988? There was a book, 88 Reasons Why Jesus is Coming Back, 1988, and then 89 came. And so here's what happens. The deception of all that is that we stop believing he's coming. Everybody with me? That's the plan of the enemy is to get enough false things out there that you don't believe the real thing and you start losing the urgency. I want to say to you that there is absolutely distress of nations upon us right now. How many is ready? How many still believe that God's going to move powerfully, that great and mighty things are going to happen regardless of all the negative things that are going to happen, that God is going to raise up his church? Now let's keep reading here. I already started yelling at you, and I just, sorry. Matthew 24. I'll get better. Now he sent on the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Take heed that no one deceives you. Take heed that no one deceives you. We've preached on it many times, but I want you to hear it again. Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name. They're actually going to come say, I'm a Christian. Amen. They'll be in the Democrat Party. They'll be in the Republican Party. My God, they're going to be in the Independent Party. They're going to create their own party, and they're going to come along. They'll say, we're of the way. Come on, we're, we're, part, we're Christians too, but then you know how this thing goes, are they? Many are going to come in his name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Now, we know that there's an antichrist spirit in operation here. We know that some people will physically declare themselves to be Jesus. That's already happened many times in history. They've been born. They come along. They think they're Jesus. They grow up, and they're like, hey, I'm the Christ. I mean, so that proves that. And then many, many's going to come in his name, and we see all these things that are going to happen. But watch what happens. I am the Christ and will deceive many. What is the purpose of them coming in the name of Christianity? Don't forget it. Remember that when you're watching the politicians this year. When they come in the name of God, but yet they're going to deceive many. We've got to know them by their fruit. Their fruit still matters. I don't care that they're trumpeting Christianity. Is there love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control? That would be the markings of a Christian. Is there holiness? Come on, is there purity? I don't care that they agree with us and they say we're patriots and we're all going to stand for this country and freedom and all the stuff that they come up with. We're talking about using the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, let those who name the name of Jesus depart from iniquity. That's in your Bible. And so naming his name and choosing to be on our side and mobilizing the church to vote a certain way is not the same thing as being a Christian. Amen? And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. Okay, there was an attack yesterday. There was a counterattack not on Iran this morning but on Hezbollah, and they're trying to figure out if they attack. If they attack Iran back, just know that it's going to get real wild real quick. But if they don't attack back, then we're basically saying Iran can just shoot a bunch of missiles and everything's happy-go-lucky. How many know we're going to catch 22 here? 
And that's why there's stress. There's distress of nations. There's national meetings being called right now. And everyone wants to persuade the nation of Israel to say, please, no matter what you do, do not launch a rocket. That's the conversations today as you're sitting in church. Please do not shoot anything. Listen, we stepped in. We used the Iron Dome. We shot down over 330 missiles. Everything's happy. Go lucky now. Come on. No one died. Just a little girl was hurt. It's no big deal here. Here, just please don't launch anything back and I'm telling you Israel already warned if anything comes at them they are going to counterattack. they've already made a public a statement to the entire planet before this happened and there was a solar eclipse amen let's just stay in the Bible and we can interpret about everything that's happening in the earth There's going to be wars and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled. I mean, no, I just told you about the wars, but you're going to have to not be troubled. I mean, no, that's the hardest part. It's like, I don't want to hang on here. I want to know what's going on, but I'm going to be troubled because most of us know how to be troubled. But God says, don't be troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, some would say this, and I want to keep you standing for just a moment because we're going to pray, and they'd say something like this. Right before that solar eclipse, how many remember the strange activity? And people would say, oh, there's always been earthquakes, but the torch of the Statue of Liberty hasn't always been struck by lightning. So before the solar eclipse, we've got the torch literally struck by lightning. We've got this rare occasion in which, and I'll never forget when an earthquake like this hit D.C. around the same time period of us doing crazy things, and it cracked the Washington Monument, a four-foot crack years ago. I believe it was 2011. And I remember preaching on that, and the Lord's like, man, tell them, warn them. I mean, my hand is doing things. They, I know people don't like to think of God having a lightning bolt in his finger, but he's got more than one lightning bolt in his finger, Just so you know he lights up the entire earth there is no lightning that strikes as lightning flashes from the east to the west so also will the coming of the son of man be he is the god of all lightning in every storm that you could possibly imagine so please don't buy this whole thing you know the god i serve doesn't have a lightning bolt in his finger he's got a lightning bolt in all 10 of them and his toes too amen just make sure we got the same god there is no lightning without him he lights up the entire earth Listen to Revelation for just a moment. Revelation 12, 9. So the great dragon, why don't we just go there? You're like, man, I'm st- this is the longest you've ever made me stand. Well, we're in a new season, amen? Maybe you ought to stand during the whole sermon. I'm going to be standing, so why don't we do something together? <laughs> oh, my feet hurt. I hope he's not going down that road. We've got to keep him off the road. He's acting crazy. I'm going to get crazier than this before this is over. So, yeah, I'm going to have you turn to two scriptures. Oh, my gosh. Revelation 12, verse 13. Listen. Now, when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child, but the woman was given two wings and of a great eagle and that she might take flight. Okay? I don't want to read all this because there's way too much happening here. That's verse 13. Let me go backwards. Let me go to 9. Let me go to 7. And then maybe we'll read 13 because I'm already in this whole futuristic thing and I don't want to do that to myself or you because I promise you we're going to skip deception and that would be frightening because that's our assignment today. Our assignment is deception, not to be all over the place. And a war broke out in heaven. Michael and the angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought. Anybody see the war? But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer i mean god knows how to win so the great dragon was cast out that serpent of old called the devil some people say where's the devil in the bible there it is and satan who deceives the whole world everybody see that in your bible who deceives the whole world he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength 
and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down I'm gonna that's gonna be awesome and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to death therefore rejoice O heavens and you you who dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time let's pray father we thank you right now come on i want you to pray with me pray with me right now pray with me pray with me come on don't be afraid of what's happening in the earth just pray right now just pray god i'm asking you right now to stir our hearts father God, I'm asking you to break us out of any type of going through the motions that's been assigned by hell to our lives. God, I'm asking you to snap us out of church attendance, going through the motions of Christianity. God, I'm asking for the voice of awakening. God, the trumpeting sound to hit the heart of every person in this room. God, I'm asking you for the urgency of the return of Jesus Christ to hit your church this morning. God, I'm asking you right now, Lord, to reveal to us, God, what we need to know to navigate gate Lord through this hour God we recognize that unusual things are happening God there's been earthquakes God the Statue of Liberty God even though there's demonic origins we also know that it is a literal stance of freedom God it is a depiction on this land but that was struck God we know that the solar eclipse came in the same time period we God we know that assaults attacks have happened in the last 24 hours we know the whole earth is on edge right now that this could actually cause a catalytic release of a World War III. God, we're praying right now that the church be steadfast, immovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. God, quicken us, lest deception take us in these last days, God. And we give you the glory for that. In Jesus' name, come on, if you believe God's going to help us, give him praise right now. Come on, he's going to help us. Let's give him high praise. Let's give him high praise. He's going to help us. He's a very present help in the time of trouble and in the time of need. In Jesus' name, you can be seated. Now, I want to say I'm not going to get on my political bandwagon because you know that that could happen real quick. I'm not going to do that to you even though it's an election, election year. But I, I want you to recognize something that, that is frightening that as much as we want there to be a clean break between conservatives and non-conservatives, how many can clearly see that's just not reality? Everybody with me? And it's just not reality, and it's so not reality that deception is getting in. Now, you may say, why do we have to talk like that? Because deception always goes to the government. I don't have time to address this, but we can go, we can deal with Nimrod, who was the 13th of Adam, and he was all about building his government, and deception had got in there, and he was doing his own thing. Then you keep tracking this thing. Deception always visits the government of a nation, which is why the ecclesia, God's ruling governmental authority, the church must arise and shine in these last days. And so please don't think for one second there's an absolute conservative party. Those days are absolutely over. It actually looks more like a two-headed snake. And this two-headed snake will converge into one nasty snake at the end because it won't be about, man, I'm clinging to a certain party. It'll be whether or not you cling to Christ because I'm telling you, these parties are so over, man, they're so woven together. There's too many strange things happening right now. Let me tell you something. It's highly concerning, and this is not to impact vote, and most people won't even talk about it because pastors are like, it's still better than the other guy, and so you shouldn't talk like this because you could start swaying. I'm not swaying anybody. We're going to call out what's wrong are you with me and this is where this message began to develop in my heart is I saw a news flash and there went something like this and I even texted Denny about it but I want, I want you to hear this and this was this was the news flash that the last president y'all with me you're like don't do it don't do it. But the last president said that Arizona, see, I can talk because I labor there. Amen. I've got a voice there. That Arizona went too far in this abortion ban. 
because they literally called up an old man over 100 years old they're saying listen we're just going to go ahead and uh, we're just going to go ahead and get rid of this cuz we got these laws on the books and we're just going to go ahead and destroy abortion they wrote in the state of Arizona who's prophetically known as the tip of the spear for national revival just so you know like if god's going to pull back his bow and there's going to be an arrow of revival Arizona's been prophesied for years would actually be the spearhead the tip of that fire that's going to begin to burn but you got to understand that simultaneously the previous president rose up and said they went too far and now the courts need to remedy this so basically we're saying killing a certain amount of babies I mean deciding to not kill any bothers Amen. basically what we're saying if we need to remedy that and we need to go back to killing babies, we're basically saying we're okay to some degree with killing babies, or we're trying to get a vote. You know how it goes. So then you start talking like this, and here's what comes back. No, he don't really mean that. What he means is this. He just knows that he can't get those votes. But see, we're starting to see LGBTQ fundraisers, and we're starting. And, and so at what point is someone going to get in power that's going to stick to their guns? And I want you to understand this, because if you don't address it now, before, and I'm talking about in your heart, I'm not talking about who you should vote for. I'm helping you understand that when I saw that, the Spirit of God spoke to me. He said, son, I want you to warn the church church and warm every campus that a barrage of deception is about to come on the United States of America and we're talking like gunfire in the spirit we're talking about things being rained down that's of the origin of deception like you've never ever 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 seen before in your life now listen to me this is what you don't do well pastor said it so I just think I'm not going to vote for it has nothing to do with that it has everything to do with we cannot make excuses or give certain people passes that clearly said I don't care who you are or what your last name is or how much money you got or how conservative you're declared to be you cannot get a pass for killing babies period and so the Lord said to me, he says, son, all I want you to do is tell them that a barrage of deception is coming. And that statement will not be the first. You're going to see it across party lines. You're going to see it in the coming days. And you're going to wonder what in the world is going on. But I'm telling you, that opened up the realm right there. That one statement opened up the realm for some of those that you thought were extremely conservative to be so compromised, so on the fence. It's going to blow your mind. And they're going to be naming the name of Jesus simultaneously. Amen. So watch this. So the Lord said a great deception is upon and will only intensify. Then I heard this. Some there's real tragedies and then there's fake tragedies. And I'm just sitting there. And then he said to me, he said, son, and then there's real catastrophic weather and then there's weather warfare which I've taught about before there's actually a treaty put in place where you cannot use the weather against your enemies we know that China could shoot electromagnetic pulse into the earth's atmosphere and make it rain so you can now trigger tsunamis you can trigger floods you can actually use the weather and it's been going on for a very long time but you can use all the weather as a weapon they could trigger without ever shooting a missile a tsunami or an earthquake fault lines to be triggered like the New Madrid fault line that's been prophesied that at some point the only reason it has not went yet is that there's two angels that's actually one on each side that's holding the New Madrid fault line until God says let go the time of mercy on this thing is over and suddenly it will cut America right in half and you will actually need to be you you will need boats my God you'll need new bridges built to get to the other side of the United States of America without repentance that is where we're headed and then I warned a few weeks ago, and it wasn't in this house here, but in another campus, that we have not seen the end of bridges being taken out. If you study the art of war, you find that one of the first weapons they use, one of, is to take bridges out because you've got to wipe out commerce. No man fell asleep at the wheel. There was no blackout. There was an intentional breaking down of a bridge, and there will be more to come. Mark my words. 
But the deception is to make you think, oh, the lights went out. He fell asleep until another one's taken out. But we will fear not, for God is with us. We will be not afraid. He's our God. But we must uproot the spirit of deception. Be careful what you believe. So there's real weather catastrophe. There's fake weather catastrophe. But how many people die? Does it really matter? Then I heard this. I want you to hear this. He said there's real attacks that's happened and there's real attacks that are happening and you will see an increase of false flag attacks in this nation that will actually be stewarded by mankind in the coming months and you're going to say, what in the world was that? And God will say, it was the weapon of deception in which the enemy wants to take a nation. Keep your eyes on King Jesus. You don't want any more end times you can, you can leave now because we're in the end times amen we're, we're in the last days we're going to have to process some of these things and stop lying to ourselves are you with me not everything you, not all the optics are real Amen. what you're seeing is not always what's really happening. So the optics, watch this, they're not always real. And so we've got all these things that are happening. We're only going to see more. Let me tell you something. It would have to be deception. Let me put this in perspective to you. So our submarines are 32 years dated. So other nations rose up and said, we're going to build submarines. They go, oh, America's not building them. America's not. And they just kept building. And now we've got this thing where we're so like this. We're down here that we can't even guard the borders of a nation through submarines. And they say, we're 32 years behind. And so they signed this thing saying, listen, but the best we can produce at the fastest, even with the money printed that we don't have, we can produce two to three submarines a year. but it couldn't have been a money issue because we keep sending the money to other wars. And you can look at that and say, that's a policy issue. That's an administration issue. No, Trump wouldn't have did that or so-and-so. Let me tell you something. It is a devil that is loose in the last days to seize the nation of freedom like never before because if America goes, so goes the whole world. It was and is the city on a hill that God sent forth. It's the only nation on the planet that parallels Israel in its assignment, in its covenant. It has a threefold purpose, preach the gospel, support Israel, and restore strain evil. If you ever don't do one of those three things, we will cease to exist. One, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ is why America was born. Two, support Israel. And we have only been blessed to the degree that we support Israel. Obadiah says, as a nation does to Israel, so God will do to them. And we just made this statement. We will shoot any missile down. This is in the last 24 hours that comes near Israel. However, we will not take the offensive at any level. So what do you think is going to happen when we need our allies? They're going to say, you know what? We'll help you shoot a few down, but we're not going to mobilize with you because as a nation does to Israel, so God will do to them. We are about to reap something that we've never seen before. And I'm telling you right now, it's all clothed in the same spirit, the spirit of deception. I mean, how do you not have money for submarines, but you have, you can leave $80 billion worth of stuff somewhere and you can, because it's planned destruction. And so, we're, man, it's them, it's that part. No, it's devils. Do you understand that? As soon as you think it's a party line issue, you've lost the spiritual war. No party wants to take out America. The devil's having a party taking out America. That's the party. The party is in the origins of hell. It's in the pentagon of hell. It's a sign of the time. It says, listen, Jesus is coming. How many is excited that the king is on his way back? But there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. There will be distress of nations. There will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes. And there will be a great delusion and deception that comes up on the earth. 
So watch this. Here's what hit my spirit. The great deception of the last days is going to sound like this. How do you know if you're dealing with deceptions? I want you to hear this. How do I know if that that right there is how do I know if they're telling me the truth or if they're lying? How do I know? Watch this. Inconsistency. Like you ready? When someone's lifted up as saving the babies and then says, I will, not find, I will not sign a federal abortion ban. And someone say, that's just an issue. No, that's actually the blood that's being applied in the spirit realm that's motivating the witchcraft to produce the demonic force to rise up out of the earth. That's actually the very issue that the false god of Moloch is operating in. That is the very issue of Baal that we've been fighting about and dealing with concerning the two-headed snake of the parties. That is the very thing. The abortion thing is not a thing. It is the thing. It is the murder of babies because they need the blood. You need to understand for just a moment there's always been power in the blood. There'll always be power in the blood. Your Christianity only works because you've applied the lamb's blood to your life. Satan can't get his hands on the lamb's blood so he's got to get his hands on the baby's blood. So I'm going to have to hear some type of shift in that language. Even if you're lying to us, I need to hear a shift in that language right there because we just literally saw an endorsement of the very demon that's taken out a nation. Israel became a nation in 1948. Everything shifted. Jesus said, like this, when he talks about him becoming a nation, he says, this generation won't pass away till all things are fulfilled. That became a debatable thing in, in, in eschatology for years. Well, some said, man, he's coming in 20 years, though. So a lot of people rose up and said, 58, 1968, because of gen And then said, no, the generation's 40 years. Okay, 70, 88, 88 reasons why Jesus is coming in 1988. So then, no, 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 a generation, we said, it's 60 years. And then, and then it's 80, and some are like, oh, well, really? It's like, close your eyes. I don't know what it is, but I know this. When Israel became a nation, that became a sign of the time, and Jesus is coming soon. That's what I do know. No one knows the day nor the hour. Here's what we were all also promised. The third temple would be built. Now, I don't want to get on the red heifer. That's been going on for years. We're acting like that's a brand new thing. I don't, I'm not sure what's going on there, but let me tell you this for just a moment. So all of, I do know this, that all the priestly garments have already been made. I do know they've taken the cornerstone. I know they've tried to start construction. I don't know where they're at. I don't live in Israel. But I do know that they're very proactive to make sure this thing happens where the Antichrist will actually walk in just like the Bible says, and he will declare himself to be God. So it's only in our generation that we've seen such an aggressiveness to actually make all the outfits, make sure we got the red heifer, make sure we got all the stuff so that they can go back and redo the very biblical things while the Antichrist declares himself to be God. So we're right there. How many would agree? We're right on the brink of Jesus Christ coming soon. If it's next month, next year, don't really matter. If it's 10 years, all I know is signs are pointing to the return of Jesus and the question remains, are you going to be deceived? Because that will be the sign of his coming. Listen to this. The technology is there for the mark of the beast. We've talked about it. There's nuclear warfare. That's on, we're right on the verge. I want you to understand that. Chemical, biological. There's earthquakes. There's famines. There's weather. It can be used as a weapon. There's signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. There's distress of nations. There's an attack on Israel. We're 24, not even 24 hours in. We don't know what the world's going to do, but we know who we are in him. Amen? We're going to draw strength from the wells of our salvation. We're going to go right there. But here's what it says, Isaiah 5.20. It says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness. I want you to understand that we are in that hour right now. A generation has actually been indoctrinated to think, if you stand with Israel, that is totally unholy. Do you realize they were taught that in school? Here's the thing. Now they grew up. And there's a whole lot of them that don't believe that we should stand with Israel. 
See, this isn't when you were a kid because you didn't, you weren't taught that craziness. But I'm telling you, a generation we have now, for the first time in history, why do you think Iran feels so excited, so passionate about it? Because they know they've got the next generation of college students right here in America that if Israel does anything, our own nation's going to rise up and say, no, no, you shouldn't stand with Israel. You should stand. They started it with Iran, not knowing that this land is the land of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Chet. Up, but now there is a generation that have risen that is fully clothed in deception and even willing to kill for the cause of not supporting Israel. Anybody with me? This isn't like when you were a child. The Bible says there rose a generation who knew not the God of Joseph. I mean, no, we're right there, right now. There has risen a generation that does not know the God that supports Israel, does not know that America's threefold purpose is to preach the gospel, support Israel, and restrain evil on this planet. Some people say, I don't think we should be in any wars. America was born to restrain evil. Now watch this. I know I might be getting into your political backyard, but... This is what you're getting. I'll serve you something else next week. You can decide if you want to eat that. You should be a Berean at the end of the day. The one thing I'm harping on more than anything is that this deception is coming to your doorstep. And if you don't know why you support Israel, you're already in trouble. If you don't know the mission of America, you're already in trouble. If you've already bought the lie that just because something's, someone's not a part of this party, but they're a part of this party, they must be good, you've already bought another lie. And you are not ready for the great delusion that's coming on the earth. So take heed lest no man deceives you. So watch this. I want you to hear this. Out of all these things that are happening, here's, here, look at this. The disciples, they just want to know one thing. They're, they're not asking Jesus like, hey, what, what are you going to be doing next week, this, that, and the other? Hey, can we walk in more signs, wonders, and miracles? Hey, can we start a prayer meeting? Hey, can we start this program? Can I do this in ministry? Can I, you know, all the church stuff that we do. Can I play this worship song? Will the pastor let me speak this day? Uh, let's go. All these, no, they weren't asking that question. They said, when are you coming? coming amen and give us the sign of your coming now let me break this down because I want you to grab a hold of it what is the sign that word sign in the Greek just so you understand it means what is the confirmation how many's ever gotten a confirmation before a confirmation should be how the prophetic works by the way someone gives you a prophetic word should not launch you to go do something that you didn't even dream about doing wasn't even on your mind it should actually come along and confirm what God already said to you Every prophetic word. Now, I understand that God can introduce new ideas, but you've got to be pretty stubborn if you've been missing him for all these years. Most of the time, he's trying to rebuke you because of sin, not telling you to relocate. Okay, so we've got to understand that there's a confirmation that has to happen. So watch this. What is the sign of your coming? What is the confirmation that you're going to crack those clouds? How, do, how can we confirm in our hearts that you're actually going to blow a trumpet, the dead in Christ are going to rise, those who are alive and remain will be caught up in the clouds, we're going to meet you in the air, you said you, in my Father's house there's many mansions, you told me this, you told me my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you told me I'm a new creation, you told me I've got citizenship, but I need a confirmation. Come on, I need to know what is going to confirm that this is going to happen. And can you imagine Jesus saying something so wild like, this here's your confirmation deception is coming he wasn't going to talk about sun and moon and stars before deception he wasn't going to talk about earthquakes before deceptions famines or pestilence or any other types of diseases they're releasing on us it, but before, let me tell you something the only reason these diseases are coming is because of deception the only reason some of these crazy things are happening is because mankind has been deceived in the last days so when you're like well, how can they say this on Tuesday and say this on Friday man last week they hated that politician the next week they're best friends and they're having dinner because they're lying to you It's called deception. So here's what we do. Well, it's lesser of two evils. Last time I checked, mathematically, lesser of two evils still go to hell. I didn't know there was, there's like evil and there's good. There's not like lesser evil. There's like evil and then there's good. Amen? Amen. That's like saying, well, this person hung out with the devil. This person kissed the devil. This, the, this person shook the devil's hand. This, this person stayed three hours at the devil's house. I mean, at the end of the day, how many know you're still playing with the devil? 
And when you get done playing with the devil, he's going to kill you. If you just shook his hand, he'd love to poke your eyes out. It don't matter how long you hung out with the devil. At the end of the day, he's there to steal, kill, and destroy. It doesn't say if you barely get near his presence, he wants to steal, kill. No, if the devil's around, he's the great deceiver. He comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. That is the mission statement of hell, which is why this deception has gotten so strong in the earth. So watch this. What's the sign? Listen to this. The sign is it's a confirmation. It confirms that Jesus is coming. So what is the confirmation? Deception. It also means in the original language to authenticate. I mean, that's a powerful word. If you, I mean, if someone gave you something you'd want to, and they said, man, this is valuable. You'd say, well, I'd like to authenticate. You know, do you have a certificate of authenticity? I mean, how do I know this is really signed by whoever? How do I know this thing is really of any value? How do I know this is really the old classic car that really has the original parts? Do you got any type of certificate? Who's went through this? And this is what Jesus is saying. You want to authenticate my arrival? When you see deception and you don't know who you can trust, I'm coming. Amen. The word coming translates, listen to this, in the Greek, what is the coming or the sign of your presence or what is it that's going to trigger or signal your arrival? I mean, now that's intense to think that deception will actually trigger the arrival of the Lord Jesus Christ. That will actually signal, like throwing these caution signs. Hey guys, I'm coming soon. Listen, listen. Flashing, flashing lights here. Stop what you're doing. Stop believing and caring about all the stuff that's going to burn. All the houses are going to burn. All the cars are going to burn. All your businesses are going to burn. Listen, you're seeing deception in the earth. Make your yourself of value for the kingdom are you saying I can't have nice things and I can't do this I'm just saying you can't do all that and be deceived like that's the most important thing on the planet Jesus Christ coming or you dying is the most important event in your life amen not whether or not we got our way, not whether or not our party won, none of that. The most important thing, hear me, and I'm just as much as a freedom fighter as you. That's why we got to rebuke the stuff that's lying to us. But we have got to be at this place where we say, I'm going to keep my eyes on that trumpet blast or I'm going to keep my eyes on that grave. If I go by way of the grave, I'm going to be ready. If that trumpet blast happens, I'm going to be ready. But I will not be deceived in these last days. I will not give out passes and just allow sin to be okay. It's not good for It's like people who, to, I've known people, they totally believe homosexuality sin until one of their family members are bound in it. And then suddenly they've got all these excuses on why it's not sin anymore and God knows their heart and one out of three siblings are gay. So it must be okay it wasn't okay before your family member got gay and it ain't okay when your family member got gay Amen. now that we've upset the whole people group let's keep moving it's funny how they can say whatever they want about Christians and that's totally okay Look at this. The Spirit of the Lord began to come up on my heart. He said, there's a barrage of deception that's coming. I said, Lord, like what? Listen to this. The word deceived in the original language. It says, beware lest anyone delude you or delude you. Listen to this. It means to impose a misleading belief on you that looks so factual. It looks so right, but it's totally misleading. How many ever had misleading information? It has partial truth, but it's a whole lie because in context, they totally took it out of context when they presented it to you. It was very misleading. It was weaponized to get you to do something, kind of like people are changing their position now to get... That's misleading information. Beware lest anyone impose a misleading belief here's a translation that causes you to go to go astray or to get you off course i remember you got how many remember in 2020 we all got so mad man they're trying to burn everything down destroy our liberties and freedoms and i'm right with you they made a movie out of it and i'll stand again okay don't don't mistake my message <laughs> don't think i won't get two kinds of crazy to stand but when we saw that It wasn't until years later, though we knew it in our heart, they were misleading us. Their information was misleading. The masks don't work because it says it on the box, not because we're a scientist or a doctor. The box says it. 
I've told you before, if it can't help the breaking of wind, it can't break a virus, okay? You need to understand that right now. So when all that stuff came, it was misleading information. And the spirit of deception. Some say, well, why don't you just wait? I don't want deception on me. I don't want it near me. Because if I go into something misleading, it has the power to get on me in a way that I don't want on my life. And I want to be able to see in clarity in the days to come so that we can shepherd God's people. Now, this message is going to make a whole lot more sense to you in the next three to four months. And you're going to say, didn't pastor say something about that? Because here's what we do. We hear the message. If it don't happen in 24 hours, my God, we got to watch the replay to remember that it was said. Unless it gets in your spirit. And then it starts making total sense. So watch this. So don't be aware, be aware lest you get misled, lest you go astray, lest you get off course, lest you deviate from the correct path. That is a translation, that you're on a correct path and then someone comes along in the name of Jesus, in the name of Christianity, because that's how deception comes. Do you realize Satan came, he came in the name of God? He's like, listen, I'm, you're not going to die. Come on, now you're going to live. He starts trying to be the first person of the Godhead here, the voice of God, the Father speaking. So he's the father of lies, the father of truth just told him what to do, but the father of lies comes and he tells him you won't die come on Eve that's ridiculous and he starts misleading so Satan never comes saying I'm Satan see the government don't come saying they're the government they come saying their safety and their protection and their everything else because everything's going haywire you've got to understand that in the days of pestilence in the days of nuclear warfare you've got dunamis power on the inside of your soul you've got the Holy Ghost inside of you that can deal with anything around us unless you don't believe so I'm going to look in I'm not going to look out everybody with me I'm not going to put my eyes on the storm. I'm going to put my eyes on the Jesus that sits on the throne of my heart to make sure that they don't mislead me. So watch this. And then I heard this. You can, you ready? There will be churches that mislead. There will be pastors that mislead. There will be political systems that mislead in the last days. There will be presidents that mislead. There will be law enforcement that mislead. How many know that? We already experienced that. There will be military that mislead. I want you to understand that because a lot of people think, you know what, if this whole thing goes down and they declare martial law, the military is going to run in. They're equally corrupt when you understand that. Not everybody. There's good people everywhere. The whole church isn't corrupt because there's some corrupt pastors my God, every doctor's not bad because there's a crazy nutcase out there. But there are high-level authority people that are absolutely misled. And the Lord said even the military will mislead. There will be doctors that mislead. When you try to get a case tried for, there will be lawyers that are working on the other side, and they will be misleading. They will be taking your money while they're misleading, while they're acting like they're on your side. While they eat lunch with the judge. The Bible says they will take us before the courts, but don't worry about what you're going to say, for the Spirit of God in you will begin to speak out. He wants you to draw strength within, not looking on the outside to be your Savior. I got one Savior. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. How many is ready for the last days? Come on, no matter what they throw, we know in whom we have believed, and the Lord Jesus Christ sits on the throne of our hearts. He said the courts are going to mislead. Remember in 2020, it didn't matter if you had a million dollars to sue whoever because, man, they're going to try to arrest you and put you in jail over a mask and fire you because you won't take it. And but then we found out the Supreme Court had a problem. And they're all buddies. So you're going to have to get the sue happy out of you and you're going to have to get the power within you. Because the level of deception the whole time, you could exhaust time, money, and resources, and they're working against you, but you would never even know it. For the days of delusion are upon America. You're like, my God, well, who can I trust? Him. Amen. And hopefully the family. Amen. And I want to give you these. Here's the three things I want you to understand. There's so much to go through. I'm not going to get through it all. 
and I'm probably not going to continue it next week, so I'm just going to sift through what I feel like the Spirit of the Lord wants me to just get out because we've got to respond to this in the Spirit. We can't just hear the Word. Everybody with me? There's three things, hear this, that deception is coming after. Remember, deception literally means to get you off course. It means to get you off a certain path. It means God has this path, and then Satan has this path. So Satan's like, I don't want you on that path. I want you on my path. Man, you're living for God. You're on fire. You're pumped up. You're sold out by God. You're conservative in your beliefs. You believe in the old America. Amen? Everybody with me? So when you got all that down in you, there's a devil that says, I've got to get that man on this path. What is hell doing right now? I promise you, if demons are at the drawing board, your name is on the board. You've got three check marks, right? You're in the devil's principal's office if you're saved at all. And since you've got three check marks by your name because you're a revival church, you believe in holiness, you believe in, you might have nine check marks because you believe in holiness and purity. My God, you are on hell's most wanted list. And so the only weapon he's got is deception. I'm going to deceive them. I mean, he'll use offense to deceive you. He'll use unforgiveness to deceive you. I'm not getting into those things, but he'll use whatever he can. He'll use things that don't even concern you to deceive you. I mean, he's been offended about something that ain't even any of your business. And just the way they did that, nyum, nyum. well, what they do? Well, they didn't do nothing to me, but what they did to them. So you're gonna carry someone else's stink face. It's called deception. My God, if you're gonna have a stink face, make sure that you're at least the owner of the situation. Because I ain't carrying everybody else's stink. I mean, no, that's stinky enough. I don't want everybody else's problem to confuse my mind. If it don't involve you, hush. We worry about things that have no impact on our personal lives, and we can't figure out where the door of deception is. I love Pastor, but he talks to me certain ways sometimes. Well, I'm not really talking to you. I'm just preaching at you. In the same room as you, (laughs) I can barely see you, but don't think you can make a stink face because I will see that. It will come through these eyes, these lights right here, hit me right in the eyes, and then I'll have to like say something crazy about the stink face, and we don't want to do that. But anyways, so here's the path. You're on a path of holiness, and so the plan of the enemy. Hear this: is I want. Let's just use Vicky for example. I want her off that path. So here's the three paths I want to give you because I promise you, in the days of deception. Everything you see from government to your job to friends you shouldn't even have in your life, these three things will be under assault. Listen to this. Hell wants you off the path of holiness. He'll use politicians. It's just like, I like them so much. They've got so much grit. They're so powerful. They're so awesome. I know they did this, but... But if you put a butt right there, you might start believing that those things are okay because now deception has come. It's not a person. Deception is a demon. Everybody understand that? It can get on anybody, and it's to change your path. So you could be hardcore about whatever it is. This is sin because the Bible says it's sin. But if someone you respect say it's not sin, suddenly the court. So he's going to use high-profile people to go ahead and redefine sin. It's been happening in the church for a long time, and he's even used pastors to redefine sin. Well, I used to think drinking was bad too, but then I got free from that religious spirit. I mean, the church had me so bound. I mean, and I decided, uh uh, Jesus turned water into wine. I think I'll have wine in my communion. These people are nuts. You've got deception written over your head like it's stamped. There is a banner. You might as well put demon eyes right on top of you. I promise you it wasn't the devil originally that gave you a conviction to not put your lips to alcohol. The devil would never, ever use a spirit of religion to keep you from drinking the thing that's a cheap copy of the Holy Ghost. Only the Holy Ghost inside of you would say, don't put that to your lips. Everybody with me? 
So there's this path of holiness, and you're living it. I mean, you can live it for 10 years. You can get fired up. But then key people in the nation, that's where I want to warn you right now, from key people. I'm talking from politicians. I'm talking from pastors. I'm talking cross-denominationally. They are now changing the course of holiness. Holiness is not the same course that you once knew. It's not the same standards that you once believed as a child or believed in your current faith. I'm telling you, there's enough other things, and they're using the Bible to do it because the Bible says in the last days they will twist the Word of God. It's interesting, at the same time of Bibles being sold, abortion went too far. They went too far banning this thing. I want you to understand that there's always repentance. Amen? For the next six months, why don't we pray that? Because there needs to be an outbreak of repentance. All the good qualities can outweigh the killing of babies are you with me so we got some work to do amen it's not to write anybody off it's not to tell you how to vote I'm telling you right now we cannot ignore this if we do we risk the chance of being totally deceived like if, if I didn't do this the way we're going to do it and address it I could go to this Bible and say, I'm going to stay silent. I know God's stirring me to say something, but I'm going to stay silent because I know that this could impact things, and I'm influential in the state and in the nation, and people watch. And uh -uh, uh -uh. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to go to this book and try to study in a lens of deception. Come on me. I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to do that for any level of influence. So watch this. I want you to hear this. There's a path of holiness, and let me tell you something. It's under attack. The holier you want to live, now, some people debate whether or not that's even a reality. How can you be holier? Holy means it. Okay. Holy means set apart for God. The holier you walk, the more you will be accused in the coming days of being judgmental. Man, I like them, but they sure judge a lot. Boy, I'd rather man judge me than God have to judge me. Because I can handle you. I might turn extra crispy if I walk into his presence thinking I'm okay. Go, go ask Nadab and Abihu rolling up in there thought, thinking they were okay, put their fire pan up, gave God their incense, and before you know it, they're baked. Fire came down and literally burned them. It was supposed to fall in their pan, but there was nothing in their pan that was holy, and so it went ahead and hit them. And so the holier you walk in the last days, I promise you, they're going to call you judgmental. They're going to call you religious. We've talked about this. They're going to call you even more legalistic. They're going to call you a bunch of religious bigots. So I got a question. Will you stay on your path of holiness? If all the homosexuals got together and they decided they were going to write an article about you, my God, you can write it about me. You can write it about my dog. I don't have one, but you can write it about whoever. Amen? Because holiness is still the path regardless of mouths moving. Purity will still be the heart of God when everything passes away. And all this, um, do you realize at some point all the governments will be consumed? It will be led by one man, the Antichrist, and Jesus is going to show up on the white horse. He's going to have the people of God with him, and he's going to destroy the Antichrist with the brightness of his coming. I want to make sure I'm on that team now and not trying to jump on that horse later. So there's a highway of holiness. If you stand for Israel, get ready. Because your voice in support of Israel will provoke major warfare like never before. You didn't know that your voice to say, man, I didn't know just saying I'm just going to keep the church open. I didn't know that that was going to have the recoil it has. I'm telling you, if you didn't stand then, you're going to have more. I told you, you're going to have a greater problem trying to stand now. But I'm telling you, if you vocalize in the next six months to a year, your support for Israel, get ready because there's going to be enough devils that want to take you off the path of holiness. Well, I mean, we are still all grafted in. It's not really about a nation anymore. and All the stuff that's been taught to prepare us for this, like it's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's land. Watch this. Let me give you some verses. Isaiah 35, 8. There's only one highway. It has no off-ramp. You ready? A highway shall be there and a road. How many want to be on that highway and that road? A biblical one. 
and it shall be called the highway of holiness. That's in your Bible. There's one road in these last days. Anything outside of that road is deception. I don't care if it's your favorite person. If holiness is we don't kill babies, if holiness is we don't walk in homosexuality, if holiness is we don't drink alcohol and consume that in our body, if holiness is we're not running around trying to get a medical marijuana license and vape it up, if holiness are these things and the list, if holiness is not lying, then I'm not going to lie. If holiness is staying in a place of purity before God, there's one road, holiness. Listen to this. The unclean shall not pass over it. Do you realize if you decide that, nah, I used to believe that way, but, and you come over here, do you realize biblically it's impossible to be on the highway of holiness and on the highway to hell? It actually says those that don't want to live this stuff cannot be on this highway. That you are banned from the highway of holiness until you repent. Because there's a highway of holiness and there's a highway to hell. And it's full of wickedness and it okays everything. So you can't be on both highways. So listen to what it says. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. Amen? Amen? Call me whatever they want. Listen to this one. 2 Corinthians 7 1. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from filthiness and of flesh and of and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Where does the Bible say I need to be holy? I just gave you three verses, and I'm only going to give you one more, and there's a Bible full of them. Romans 12, 11, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable act of worship. So here's your weapon against deception, holiness. If you allow holiness... To be encroached upon by the enemy. Deception is the only alternative. That's why you got to say things even when it's hard to say them. Even when you don't know if whoever out there is going to agree. At the end of the day, life began at conception. And thou shalt not murder. And I don't care who thinks we need to remedy this in the courts. God already fixed this when he said, I'm going to overthrow. It had been prophesied. He's going to overthrow Roe v. Wade. I mean, all these things. And all this. And it, it's, it's crazy to watch how this thing plays out. But God, God got the job done. Number two. I've got to get through this. Hell wants you off the path of prayer. So deception comes, first of all, to come after your walk. The next layer is to come after your communication with God. Here's the scary part of what's happening in Israel right now. We know enough end times that we could actually get to a place that says, Bible says it's going to happen. I'm not even going to worry about it. It says it's going to happen. It says it's going to happen. I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm not even, uh-uh. If you're here, you are called to pray. The Bible says that we ought to watch and pray. It isn't just watch for his return, but we ought to watch and pray. The Bible says we ought to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Everybody with me? So that is the heart cry of the Father over this house, that we pray. I know there's going to be war. I know there's signs of the times, but God says, listen, and if we don't do these things, deception will come up on our lives because it's to get you off the path. Now watch this. Hell, once you're almost done. Listen to this. Israel's been at war. Economies come and go earthquakes have always been solar eclipses and lunars have, have always been there's always been comments somebody's heard it come on the scoffers it's always been they've always had that man ancient rome fell don't tell me america's economy can break and they just, that's how they do it they treat all these signs these are events that's always happened and that's just the way it is. let me tell you something if you stop praying that is what you'll embrace 
This is the deal that God handed to us in the last days. We're not even going to worry about it. And as soon as prayer isn't on your agenda anymore to pray for this nation, you don't care. Let me tell you something. There's some things that need to be overthrown and undone and repented of right now before we get to November. I'm telling you, that's what we need to be right now. We have got to see a shift in this area. So listen to this. He wants to get you off the path of prayer because he knows the more Aaron communicates with God, the more clear he's going to see the things of God. The more you talk to God, the more you're going to see his word in clarity. The less you talk to God, the more you're going to listen to men and women and before you know it, you're communicating with them more than you're communicating with God. Social media becomes your God. Conversing with everything but God. The news is your God. The newspaper is your God. All these other forms of communication has invaded the mind. And suddenly you can't get a clear hear from God. Deception. Let me give you the verses. I've got one more. And then I'm going to have Aaron come. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. It says, rejoice always. You ready? Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Listen to this one, 1 John 5, 14. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Matthew 26, 41. Listen to this one. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Now, here's what some people believe. I, I'm, I'm over that. I used to battle that back in like 10 years ago. Do you know there's a time in your walk where things you used to battle will creep up and try to make a brand new battle for your life? And you're like, I thought I was totally free from that. You were, and you are. But the Bible says you watch and pray lest you're overtaken by temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. How many has been there before? It says, my spirit wants to live holy. My spirit wants to do this. But man, this flesh wants to act this way and act that way. As soon as you start preaching the truth and people don't want to repent, their flesh starts acting up. I've seen it all over the nation. My God, they squirm in their seat, do all kinds of craziness, and before you know it, they might even exit. Because flesh don't want anything to do with the word of God and his love that wants to set you free. But we can't preach his love without preaching the problem. Or his love has no value. Number three. Hell wants you off the path of soul winning. I'm going to say that again. Hell wants you off the path of soul winning. There's really only three things that hell's really going to come out of. One, your walk with God. He can't stand holiness. Number two, he don't want you communicating with God because you might actually hear the plan of God for your life and the purpose and you'll be able to expose the deception out there. You'll know straight by this book what's right and what's wrong. Thirdly, he don't want you giving what's inside of you to somebody else because you might actually add to the family. Listen to this. So hell wants you off the path of evangelism. It's deceived many. I want you to hear this. Many people in the last days. Evangelism was your heartbeat when you got saved. But then deception came. And you're glad you got saved, but it doesn't really matter if anyone else gets saved. Because deception... If you do not want to win people to Jesus, and I, I'm going I'm to say this, and I'm going to tell you this, and I know this is going to hurt. If you do not want to win people to Jesus, you are absolutely deceived. I don't care your church attendance. I don't care your tithe. If you have no heart, and I'm not talking about whether or not you go with James, so don't misunderstand me. Well, he's saying I wasn't there Tuesday. He's saying I wasn't there Saturday. He's saying I'm not even saved. That's not what I said. If you do not have a heart to see people come to Jesus, you are absolutely deceived. That has always been the plan of the enemy is to... I'm okay if you're saved as long as no one else gets saved, and I'll spend the rest of your life trying to keep you from remaining saved. So he uses doctrines of devils. He uses all kinds of deception. Listen to this. I want to show you these verses. Aaron, I want you to come. Acts 2.21. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord let me think that's so important. It shall come. To, uh, who, well, how are they going to call on the name of the Lord? Everybody raise your hand. Amen. I'm not deceived. I'm going to give you the Jesus that's in me so that you can call on the name of the Lord. Listen to this one. Acts 4.12 says, nor is there salvation in any other. 
For there's no other name under heaven given among men by which you'll be saved. Well, what about the name of humility? No, nope, that won't save you. What about the name of, you know what, I'm going to bless this person because you know what, they've they're, they got nothing to eat and I just want to come feed them. Nope. You mean my good deeds? Uh Uh-uh. There's no other name under heaven where men can be saved but the name of Jesus. That's it. So if you have nothing to give them, you've got something to give them. I don't have anything physically. You've got something spiritually. See, it's deception to try to just do good deeds but not give him. See, he wants us to give him. Do good deeds. I'll show you faith by my works. We should obey God. We should do good deeds. We should have works. But we must give them Jesus. Listen to this. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but it is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the nations are raging. I want them all to come to repentance. Israel's under attack. My heart's still repentance. I want people to go out and win people to me. My heart is repentance. Well, they said we can't leave the house. We're on lockdown. I said you can leave the house. Go lead them. Go into all the world. When lockdowns came, I said, uh-uh, I've got a word on it. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to go because he already told me I could go. Proverbs 11.30 The fruit of righteousness is the tree of life and he who wins souls is wise. Mark 8.36 For what will it profit a man if he gets the whole world, all your stuff, everything's in order, but yet he loses his own soul? What happens to America if we, the economy bounces back but no more people are saved? The American dream came back. They actually said, you know, a few days ago, they said, we, we believe for the first time, we're just going to have to say it. We think the American dream m- might be dead because the interest rates, they tried to get the guy to speak on it. And they're like, could you, could you talk about it? Do we see any hope there or anything? I'm just not going to do that. I, I, I... Welcome to the last days. I got one dream. That we keep people from going to hell. That's my dream. Some are going to be mad in the process. Some are going to get saved right away. Do you realize the Bible makes it clear that His Word is a stumbling block of offense or it's a chief cornerstone in which your life can be built on? But the preacher cannot determine that. What you want in your life is going to determine that. If you want to be built up, you want to you want to make it to heaven. My God, use the word and stand on it. But if you want to keep living like hell, this will trip you up, make you absolutely furious, irritate you twenty four seven three. It is the most offensive book on the planet. This book is so highly offensive. Do you realize it's banned in over fifty nations? They hate it. The government don't want it. They're like, nope, you bring that book. That means we got to change everything we're doing. They don't want them bought. They don't want them sold. They don't want them in E-form. They don't want them in tree form. And we get concerned about the one person that says, I don't want that. The nations of the earth don't want it. I was thinking about this. I'm about done. You know, people come in the name of Jesus, me and Randy. I don't remember. I think Pastor Bob might have been with us. I don't remember. We've been on so many trips. But we were in Washington, D.C. one time. And there was this guy. He had, like, the only parking area. And he wanted, like, 500 bucks to park there. It was, it was just crazy. Of course, we were in an RV. But 250 would have been better. But anyways, his prices just went up as he just decided whatever he felt like. But anyways, he was talking to us, and we started talking about Jesus. And I mean, me and Randy's listening to him, and he was talking Jesus this, and Jesus, he almost sounded like one of us. And immediately, deception overtook his mind. 
what he really believed came out. He started talking about some of the most wildest things. It's just like not Jesus at all. Man, twisting up the Word of God. It was just like, it. and I realized, oh, my goodness, someone could actually, man, if they would have left five minutes into the conversation, they would think this guy's washed in the blood, baptized in fire. But stick around and listen long enough, and you'll hear the deception that comes out of people. And that's what I feel like is coming. We're going to have to shut up for a while in these last days and start listening to people long enough, and you're going to find a whole lot of contradictions contradictions with this book God I speak to the spirit of deception Lord And I command that grip to be loosed now. Off this house, off political candidates, off people running for president, God, off people that attend churches, that sit in them every week, but that spirit has its nasty claws in them. I speak to the spirit of deception. I command your fingertips to be pulled back from the souls of mankind. Come on, pray with me. I wanted to talk to you about religious deception and doctrinal deception and even sexual deception. There's so many different deceptions that loosen the earth, but we don't really have time because I don't want to fatigue you right now. It's not about a clock. It's just if I keep preaching, we won't be able to apply what I've given you so far. And we've got to address this spirit that's so lethal. Whenever you're ready, you can stand to your feet. Whenever you're ready, because I'm telling you right now, there's so much deception in the earth. Why does deception want me? I'm going to give it to you again, and you can respond to these altars. It wants you off the path of holiness. If you felt a strong pull lately to get off the path of holiness, I don't even care if you did it, but you felt it. I want you to come to these altars right now. I feel that thing trying to pull me off the path of holiness. It wants to pull you off the path of prayer. Your communication with God is swallowed up by what the news is telling you, what the media is telling you, what people are saying. I'm telling you, we've got to start communicating with God. Let's deception get in us. Finally, you were on the path of soul winning, and now you're not really on the path of soul winning. Come on. Come on. Because hell don't want you doing that, I promise you. It wants you off the path of evangelism. Come on. Humble yourself and say, God, I don't want to be deceived. I know if I keep preaching Jesus and an outpouring of his spirit and end time signs of the times of his return and I keep the ministry him, Deception's gonna have a very hard time getting on my life. So as mercy and grace unfold a hunger. I know that I obey I obey the word that deception's gonna have a hard time. If I fail, I must repent quickly lest deception get on my life. God help us. I surrender. I surrender. Oh, I want to know you. More. God help us. I want to know you. More. And then finally, however you want to come, press in. These altars are open. You come as, Lord, as the Lord leads you. Just slip right out. You say, I want more, God. I want to press in a little bit. I'm not off the path of holiness. My prayer life has not been interrupted. But I need Jesus. I need that deception to be far from my life.
Billions of people think that Israel should just sit there and be bombed. What's your stance? Millions of so-called Christians think double lives are okay. What's your stance? Deception in the last days. Lord, have your way. Most churches believe that evangelism is an extracurricular activity. But we don't find that in the Bible. Tell your co-workers about Christ. Tell your family members about Christ. Tell the guy on the street. I don't care where you're at. If God provides an opportunity... Give your testimony. I'm going to pray for every one of these altars that the spirit of deception is absolutely broken and expelled. Not everything you're seeing right now is really how it is. party rose so we're not putting up with people just playing church games it's called the holiness part that's how we live holy that two-headed snake will look you right in the eye and tell you they're praying for you while they've got alcohol in their hand to come, but God, I pray for your people right now. Judgment, if it's coming to America, it's coming to the house of God first, is what the Bible says. Judgment begins right here in the house. It doesn't begin in bad neighborhoods. It doesn't begin in bad legislation that's taking place. Judgment begins in the house of God. That's what the Bible says. It starts right here. So if you think God's going to judge America, get ready. He's judging his church first. That's word of God. He's going to correct us first. I break all deception. I break all deception. I say deception can't come near to get you off a path. God gave you that path. God gave you that path. God gave you that path. God showed you the path. And your heart for people. You don't get off that path. He gave you that path. When people repent, you get excited. When they're bothered by the gospel, you're bothered. Because your heart wants them to come to Jesus. Don't lose the heart. There's a path. There's a way that seems right to man, but the end is destruction. I don't want man's plan. I think about Israel it's what God thinks about Israel and I want to think like God doesn't matter what you think about sin it's what God thinks about sin so I want to be like God but they don't want to hear that well I don't know what to tell you God has it in his book he thinks they ought to hear it he thinks they ought to hear it Well, you're rough, Pastor. Well, I didn't burn a city down for homosexuality. God burned a whole city down. And it wasn't just for that sin. It was a whole bunch of other sins. Something's changing in the spirit. Something's breaking. I 
I can feel it in. Well, your language is intense. Well, they called, John says they're brood of vipers. Something's changing in the spirit. I don't want this house deceived in the days to come. Come on, cry out, church. We are throwing up warning signs of deception that has now infiltrated the nation like never before. For the Lord said there will be a barrage. That's like a bunch of missiles. That's like crazy gunfire of deception that's about to hit this nation. That was the word of the Lord. Son warned the people that a barrage of deception. They don't know what to believe in the days to come. They won't even know what's real and what's not. But if they know me, they'll be just fine. Keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on the king. Double-headed serpent. Well, something's changing in the spirit. Something's and it's coming up. like a viper in 2024. Some would describe it as a spirit of python. And it's going to wrap itself around anybody that's deceived. And choke the life out of them. a demoniac in Acts chapter 16. She was operating in the spirit of divination. One of the translations is the spirit of Python that could choke things out. A fortune teller that made money for the rulers. And Paul got so annoyed he cast that thing out of her. But he ended up in jail. I'm going to tell you right now, you could end up in jail dealing with Python. We've got a double-headed snake in this nation right now. No deception. No deception in these two. Eric, could help you real quick? Come on. Come on, let that thing go. Let that thing go right now. Let that thing go right now in Jesus' name. Now! We're about to tap into something different in the last days. I don't care who you are. If you're carrying something, that thing's attacking you, it's going to come off. Susan, I want you to come real quick. It's coming off. It's coming off. For the days of deception are upon us. Truth. I speak truth over you. Don't let them people deceive you anymore. Virginia, I want you to help me real quick. A new season over your life. And I crush everything that's in the path of success. You are educated and spiritually armed and anointed by God to deal with a bunch of shenanigans. All you promised me. I speak life and freedom over you. And I say to the spirit of Python that wants to grip you and choke life. And choke life. Out inside of you, Akila. Be broken in Jesus' name. They're not your source. You're going to have to get in mindset in anything that man takes from you or the devil. It will be returned sevenfold. If you live your life like that, you will not fear one man on this planet. 
I don't care what any man could ever try to take from me. If God assigned it to my life, He returns it sevenfold. Man is not your source. Nor is the government. Something's breaking, I can feel it. Heaven come down. Something's changing in the spirit. Something's breaking, I can feel it. Heaven come down. Some want to meet these politicians so bad that just keep on trumpeting their sound, even if their sound violates the Bible. I ain't doing that. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I say no deception can come near this home. Come near this marriage. Come near the children. God, I say in these last days, God, that they be unbelievable truth tellers, God. I say right now, Lord, that the wave of this thing that wants to knock them off the path of holiness or restrict their communication with God and cause them to avoid soul winning is straight from hell and it attacks us all. But I say it's just a lie. It's a twisted manifestation of the enemy that wants to wrap itself around the church in the last days. But God, I say we get back to business, the kingdom business, the assignment that you place on our lives. Randy, come pray with me real quick. Just grab their hands. I want to just believe it. In the days of deception, none will be found among them. Don't let these people deceive you anymore, Tequila. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Norman, can I can you can I bother, bother you for just a second? In the name of Jesus. Andy, can I borrow you for just a second? Waves of your glory. If you need to give your life to Jesus, today's the day. Run down here, just get to the altar and say, I want to give my heart to Jesus. Just start giving your heart to him. There's no special perfect prayer. You just run down and say, I lay down my life. I'm sorry, God. Come into my heart. Forgive my sin. I believe you died and you rose again. Just give him your life. That's how you do it. You run to the altar and you just give him your life. Send us waves of your glory. God has called you to a certain ministry, but you can't let these foolish kids deceive you. Of you. The Bible says that foolishness is bound up in the heart of the child. And you're like, why don't you just get it? They haven't walked through what you walked through. They haven't seen that thing. Your number one assignment is to bring deception on people's lives. Don't start anywhere else. You start with breaking deception. Send us ways of your presence. Not with caring for them, not with giving them stuff. You break deception off of their lives. One of the assignments, our national calling, is to roll into regions and break deception off the region. Off the pastors, off people there, off the people that's been believing lies. God already told you he's going to bless you. He already told you he's going to bless you. Don't believe the deceptive lies of the devil. He told you what he was going to do. He told you he would make you prosper. Stay holy. Keep communicating. Win the lost. What is my calling? What is your calling? Live holy. Pray. Win the lost. Live holy. Pray. Win the lost. Well, where's worship in there? Worship is the life you live. You can always sing a song, but if you don't have a lifestyle of holiness and prayer and soul winning, 
What does it matter what we see? In the name of Jesus, snap all deception off of your people in the last days. He cries out to deep like a sound from a waterfall. That you're washing over me with your presence. Deep cries out to deep. Here's how we're going to end it this morning, and if you need to cut out, feel free, but we're going to pray over Israel, so I need some people to come help me pray. Anybody in this room that cares, I want you to come down. We're going to pray over Israel, because God told us that's what we ought to do. We're going to pray over Israel. Come on, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Iran's next move is to overwhelm the Iron Dome if they get attacked. One of the areas say they're going to save 150,000 missiles. To overwhelm that uh, that iron dome, we gotta overwhelm it. That's the plan. We're going we're gonna overwhelm the iron dome. They ain't gonna overwhelm the hand of God, because God knows how to knock missiles right out of the sky. And America's gonna look real foolish if we just keep setting back, saying we'll help you with a little defense. But you know, beyond that, I don't know. I want you to pray for Israel right now. Come on, I want you to lift your voice right now. Because this is an earth-shaking event. This is an earth, this ain't just another old war. What happens in the next 48 hours could be absolutely transforming to economy, to everything. For God's eyes are upon the nation of Israel right now. He's looking at Israel right now, and he's looking to see how America is going to respond. God, I shut down their plan to overwhelm the Iron Dome. God, when they make an attempt to overwhelm that thing, God, I pray that the angelic armies of heaven takes flight. God, that you start pushing missiles out of the sky. God, I ask you to overwhelm, God, every one of their drones. God, every one of their missiles. I pray that the hand of God starts swiping every single ballistic missile right out of the sky. Lord, I pray it's like ping pong in that realm, God. You knock every one of them down, Lord. And you show the whole earth that you're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God, I pray that the God of battles begins to move on the battlefield. I pray that America wakes up in the name of Jesus and repents for being so lethargic in our response, oh God. Come on, I need a few prayer warriors. Come on, don't make me work. Just pray. Encourage me with the sound of prayers.
generation has been taught the wrong thing. Don't get angry with them. You just pray. Because they took Bible out of the schools. And they took prayer out of the school. How could they learn anything different? But God still has his remnant left in the earth. That can move things in prayer. God, I pray that deception comes off of Washington. In their G whatever meeting, they're planning to dialogue and try to defuse the situation and discourage Israel from coming with full force. God, I pray right now that the eyes of deception be ripped off, that they'd recognize that this is a holy war. This has never been about lamb. This has always been about God. And Lord, I pray right now that they'd be enlightened to the reality that this is a last day holy war. They want Israel blown off the map because they don't want God to exist. And they know that God rules that nation. They're trying to poke the eye of God. But the Bible says, listen, that we're the apple of his eye. And we will see the hand of God. Israel's the apple of his eye. That's why Israel will always be here. When you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, you're making a faith statement that you're God. Your Jesus walked that land. He died and got up from the grave. How do you not support the location in which your Jesus died and got up from the grave? This is not just some far-fetched land that we see about on the news. This is where demoniacs were set free. Everything we preach about finds its origin in the place that 300 missiles came at. God, I pray that you show off the next few days, Lord. I thank you that we're in the last days, but we're not going to be deceived by this foolish talk out there, Lord. For New Hope Revival Church absolutely supports Israel. And we pray. Here's what I want to do. Two minutes of warfare prayer for Israel. We'll wrap it up. Come on, two minutes of war. What does that mean to you? Warfare prayer for Israel. Come on, I want you. Whatever that means to you. If that's a decree, if that's a shout, if that's grab the devil and rip his head off, whatever type of prayer you got, I want you to unleash it. Come on. The true ballistic missiles are prayer. The true atomic bomb is prayer. The true nuclear element is the spirit realm in which we can shut down anything. God, we apply the Lamb's blood upon the nation of Israel right now. And we say, God, move and power upon that nation. Show the whole world that you're the God of Israel. about 45 more seconds I want you to press 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 into God in that place still praying just let it go for a second I don't want to cut you off I want you to pray that in pray that in come on he's moving he's giving you a burden for that nation God if you got to turn every surrounding area into a parking lot I ask you to do it God, if you have to level the ground of every enemy. I love you, Jesus. You're like, my 
That Jesus ain't like that. The Bible calls him a man of war, for the Lord is a man. He says he has storehouses of hail. Literal hail. Storehouses of it in heaven that awaits the day of battle. God, I ask you to bog down the enemy. God, I pray their tanks run out of fuel. God, I pray their tracks. That belt, Lord, around those tanks, God would literally start coming off like you took the chariot wheels off the enemy. God, I ask you to bend barrels. God, I ask for mishaps on the battlefield. God, when they push the buttons, Lord, I pray that somehow it just can't respond. Like the last war when they said, Israel's under attack, but yet... The news articles read the miraculous power of God is on the battlefield. And during that season, we prophesied and we said, the God of battles will soon fight. We say, let the Lord of hosts, the God of battles, I don't want to falsely prophesy. I'm just going to tell you what I saw, and then we're just. I just saw three o'clock. I saw three o'clock just come right before my eyes. And some would take that word and turn it into something else, and I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tell you that in the spirit realm, I saw just 3 p.m. just fall before my eyes. It could be God. It could be bad beef jerky. I don't know what it is. I'm just going to tell you that's what I saw. Have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to remind you about the book, The Convergence of Revival and the King's Revival. The, the King's Arrival, it's available. Most of you have it, but for those that are watching my live stream, you can go to calebcooperministries.com. It's got an emergency list in the back is the only reason I'm bringing it up. And so if we need to tune up our emergency list, I want to challenge you to tune up your emergency list. If this is the first time you're hearing about an emergency list, then me and you need to talk, okay? If you can't afford an emergency list, we will help you, okay? We will help you. We don't just run around saying, feel this, but nah, uh be warm and well-fed and do nothing. That's not how we do business around here. If we need to help people, we help people. That's how we do business. But you need to consider your emergency list. You may say, last time you said that, I didn't have to use it. I hope it all goes bad. I hope everything you got spoils. Because that lets me know the grace of God's come. Come on, if God has mercy, how many, I mean, do you want to eat your canned food all day? I mean, do you want to use your flashlights? Don't get mad at me. So every day you don't have to rejoice and celebrate. But I'd rather you be prepared for the days to come. And so that book's available, but it has an emergency list. Normally I just pass out the emergency list, but we don't have any printed. But we know it's in the book, and if you want that and not the book, that's cool. I can email it to you. So we're without excuse to be prepared. Father, we seal this word today. God, I thank you. For truth, God. God, I pray for every person that's running for all offices, including President of the United States. And God, I pray right now this compromise thing be broken. This back and forth kind of thing, playing with the blood of children, be broken in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that there be a massive repentance and turnaround in this arena right here. And God, we do pray over the elections, and we do go vote. We do our job. But God, we call a nation to repentance right now. And Father, protect Israel. And finally, we seal the word that we would remain on the path of holiness. We would not be moved from the path of prayer. And God, the enemy would not be able to take us off the path of soul winning. That we'd keep our focus right 
God, even in what appears, and even some nations now, like the days of doom, may we keep the word of God close to us that we might not sin against you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give him praise. Come on, he's worthy. Remember to pray for us tomorrow. We'll fly out. Tuesday, we're going to be on a show, Las Vegas, tonight. Tell our story on a television show. And then Wednesday, we're going to be working with sheriffs and police officers and patriots. And hopefully, we can unite shepherds and sheriffs to run together in the last days. And so, that's our plan this week. So, pray for safety. If bombs start flying and we're in the air, just pray for safety. We'll be back. Amen. God bless you.